new grandbaby, granddaughter, Evie, had just been born. And we were, it was Saturday night, and she was three days old. And I went over to see her and uh, her mom and dad. Her mom and dad don't matter as much. I mean, the grandbaby's what matters. And uh, on the way home, driving from Tyler's house to my house, I had a sudden picture of my son as a single dad with his wife gone. And it, it just, it captured me so hard, I just began to, to pray. I'm old school, I was pleading the blood and just praying protection for my son and for his wife and for their daughter. The, the next morning, about seven o'clock, I got a call from my son and they were rushing my daughter-in-law to the hospital. When she got there, the, it, it looked bad. The prognosis wasn't good. and. Her blood pressure was super high and her pulse rate was 157 and her pulse ox was super low. Uh, and as she, as she hung on to life, I thought back to the night before and that the Spirit had prompted me to pray. Then that afternoon, a pastor friend in town, Hugh and Katie Yarborough, Katie messaged me and she said, Pastor Rod, I, I heard what's going on with Emily. And I gotta tell you, I've, I know you and I know your wife, Cindy. I know Tyler, I've never met his wife. But last night I couldn't sleep because the Holy Spirit was just tugging at my heart to intercede and to pray for Emma. And I want you to know I stayed up last night praying for her. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit spoke to Katie. Because the Holy Spirit knew what was going to happen and called us to prayer. 57 hours after she entered the CICU, Emily walked out of that hospital healed and whole, and she's healthy today. And I'm so thankful for people who pray. We continue our sermon series on the Holy Spirit as we gear up for next week is Pentecost Sunday. And we're sensing God is doing amazing work. He's healing people locally, People are being filled with the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to have a couple of video testimonies. In the last, I think, two or three months, three or four people have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue to talk about what that is. But in anticipation of Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday, I'm calling the church, both Marlton and Valesburg, to a day of prayer and fasting this Wednesday. So we're not going to eat any food, just drink water, and then we'll break the fast Wednesday at our United Prayer Service. We'll take communion together. You know, the Bible teaches us that some things only happen by prayer and fasting. You want more miracles, you want more presence of God, you want a breakthrough in your life, pray, fast, believe God that God will give us his grace upon our hearts and our lives. And so we're in this little sermon series on the Holy Spirit. I started four weeks ago talking about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Then Pastor Jamel preached about the Holy Spirit in Jesus, how he overcame temptation Two weeks ago, I talked about Pentecost, and that's a Jewish feast. Then last week, and weren't we blessed last week? My wife preached a great message to all the moms about the Holy Spirit in the home. Come on. That's my wife right there. Great, great job. It was on the screen and everything like that. It was just great. And today, I preach a message to you about the Holy Spirit and fire. Everybody say fire. So the Holy Spirit is described in four ways. Breath. Wind, a dove, remember Jesus was baptized and the dove came, and then the other way it's described as fire. I have a picture for you as the Old Testament, the people of God were led through uh, the desert, a cloud by day and a fire by night. That was God's direction for the people of God. God led the people of God by the Holy Spirit. It was just a visible presence of Almighty God. But I want to talk to you about fire. And it's, it won't hurt you. You don't have to yell fire and pull the fire alarm. This is God's abiding presence that touches your heart and your life. This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter 2. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among them, along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. This is when Jesus was already resurrected. Jesus asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? 
They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth? He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we hope that he was the one who is going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Then jumping down to 31. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? When you hear the word of God, when you hear the gospel, when you hear the word of God proclaimed, and maybe you maybe already sensed it this morning, what you will sense is a sensation inside of you a work of God's spirit that will feel or sense like a fire inside of you. As Jesus was leading them and walking with them, their hearts were burning within them. Your world could be falling apart. There could be problems all around us politically, financially, all around us, but God could still be doing a work in your heart. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is like fire. When you give your life to Christ, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and the fire of God burns inside of you, especially when you read God's word. You know that it's true because it speaks to your heart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. The Holy Spirit is like a fire, but I just want to emphasize this point. You will not get hurt. A good friend of mine, some of you might know the name, Scotty Gibbons, famous uh, preacher. When he was younger, I think he said he was in the seventh grade. You know, they tell you don't play with fire. I have to be honest with you. Outside of the grace of God, I think I, I, was a, I was a pyromaniac growing up. I think I could have burnt down all of North Jersey growing up if, if it wasn't for just the grace of God. But, you know, your parents say don't play with matches in the house especially. But boys in particular just kind of don't listen sometimes. And a friend of mine, he was playing with fire in his garage, literally burnt down his whole house. Could you imagine your dad coming home at 5 o'clock from work? Oh, I wouldn't want to be that kid. The fire that we're talking about will not hurt you. It won't burn down your house. It will be a sense of health and joy and grace to your life. And it, the Holy Spirit is always connected with Jesus. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is always connected with Jesus. The reason the person, the Holy Spirit, it glorifies, it makes Jesus come alive. And so sometimes people will say, oh, it, the Holy Spirit is like a force. It's not a force like Star Wars, or it's not spooky like a ghost. The Holy Spirit is a real person who's very practical in our lives, but you do not get hurt. It's God's way of making Jesus Christ real and powerful today. Watch this. On the day of Pentecost, there was fire, but nobody gets hurt. People get blessed. The world gets changed. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Could you imagine being there, 120 people, and everybody has fire over them, but nobody's saying, get out, there's a fire, no one's pulling the alarm, no firemen, no fire extinguishers. Just God's abiding presence. Ladies and gentlemen, you can have more of the Holy Spirit. If you want more of God, you've come to the right place. You can experience his presence and his power. Fire is actually a blessing. In an article last year, February 2nd, from Stonehearth 
magazine, it says this, the crackling of a fire produces three things, reduced blood pressure, fire relaxes us, and fire helps us connect with different people. In a study done by the University of Alabama, 226 people were asked to observe a video of a burning fireplace. Their blood pressure was taken before and after viewing the fire. As it turns out, listening to the crackling of a fire leads to reduced blood pressure. The longer the participants watched and listened to the fire, the lower their blood pressure became. I would suggest to you in the world that we live in where people are anxious, stressed out, argumentative, concerned politically, that we need the Holy Spirit to come upon our lives to reduce the stress. We need God to burn upon our hearts so we look for something that's bigger and better and not get caught up in the things of this world. It reduces us. It relaxes us. And finally, the fire helps us connect. We have a fire pit in our backyard, and two or three times during the year, my daughters will ask, can we have some friends over and say, we want a fire pit? You know what that means? I have to go buy all the stuff for s'mores. Hot dogs, burgers, dad, can you get all the chairs out? Can you clean up? Can you... I have to do all the work for them and their friends. Can we get the blankets out? Then we have to wash half the house when the kids leave. Bottles of water. But for hours, our young people will sit around like a campfire, if you will, with these long sticks. And you know what they say? Dad, don't come outside. I said, when you are old enough to pay the taxes in Marlton, then I won't come out in your house. So I go out there, I have somebody make me a marshmallow. Have you noticed they make marshmallows like this big now? Those are great. And I'll get it. But the young people just sit around, they just talk. They're, I don't know if you ever noticed, people are less on their cell phones and they're just kind of together. You know what the Holy Spirit does to a congregation or a people? It brings people together. The Holy Spirit wants to work in our life, in this church, and in this country and bring people together. You can't do it winning arguments. You say, oh, I'm going to watch Fox News, and they're more on the right side than MSNBC or CNN. Or you say, oh, man, you know, Fox, they're racist, and, you know, they care about the wealthiest 1%, and it's really in. All those programs are designed to fight. It's competition at its highest. It's to turn on one another. It's the way that Satan works in the world. He lies to us, but God turns it around and says, I have a fire that brings people together of all nationalities, and I want to touch people's hearts and lives. A fire can get out of control. It can do great damage. It can ruin a forest, but also it can warm people and bring people together. And I believe with all my heart, God is wanting to do something by his spirit and it's available still today. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So what happens is in a believer's lives, and by the way, I, I do this all the time, especially up in Newark. I say, man, if we don't get along, we're going to be in some trouble. One, what God's doing up at Valesburg, Newark is actually wonderful. But I said, we got to love one another. We can't allow a little pigment of our skin or some small differences in humanity to keep us apart. But we have to love one another and we have to laugh. So I'm going to just give you a couple dad jokes because I've been telling dad jokes up there. Let me just tell you about humor. Humor is the currency of today. You say, well, I don't, I'm not a fun guy. You need to get some dad jokes. Everybody likes dad jokes. The world that we're in right now, people are against each other. And I know that sounds crazy, but you, you and I have got to connect with one another. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will just naturally do that because God is in your heart and you love God and that means you'll love people. But up in Newark, it's a new crowd for me and so I say, hey, listen, we gotta love one another, we gotta laugh together and so I'm gonna try out some of my dad jokes on you for tonight. How's that sound, all right? Do you know what you call a lazy doctor? Dr. Doolittle. Come on, somebody, that's pretty good. Do you know what you call a pastor in Germany? A German shepherd. That's good. Thank you. One person. Free lunch. A friend of mine just got two new dogs. He, won name, he, won, he named one Timex, and the other dog he named Rolex. They were both watchdogs. Come on, somebody. Those are good right there. <laughs> Dr. 
The Holy Spirit is for everybody. I don't know if you've been tracking with us, but we talked about the Old Testament, then Jesus, then Acts chapter 2, then Miriam talked last week about Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius' house. If you go to Acts chapter 19, you just kind of go through, there's another experience of people receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues. This is what it says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, we have not even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. And Paul asked them, what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They got saved, or some people said they were already saved. But verse 6 says, then Paul placed his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they all spoke in other tongues. What happens to let you know when you've been spirit baptized? By the way, this is a grace. When you receive salvation from Jesus, it's a grace. You've been saved by grace through faith. It's nothing you can do on your own. You can't earn it. It's salvation. By the way, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. God's not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to know him. Now, people, more people go to hell than to heaven, the Bible says. Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and the majority go there, but narrow is the road. So there is a responsibility for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to follow him. But it's a grace. It's it's salvation. God wants to give everybody salvation. So the Holy Spirit comes upon in you. But then after that, there's another grace. It's a gift that God gives to all believers. It's called spirit baptism, and it's available for you today. And I don't know why God chose this. I'm just his messenger today. But you'll know, and people around you'll know, when you receive spirit, spirit baptism, when you speak in other tongues. I didn't make this up. I know it sounds weird. I don't know why God says tongues. Why didn't he make you wiggle your arm? Why did he make you jump up? It's a confirming sign. That's just how you know. The goal is never to speak in tongues. That's almost weird. The goal is that you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and there'll be a greater presence of God upon you in your life, and especially in ministry. God wants everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the way, if God touched you by the Holy Spirit yesterday or a year ago, whatever, there's a fresh move of the Holy Spirit today. So at my house, I have a fireplace, and I have like a big log sometimes before I go to bed, and it's pretty safe, and so I'll go to bed, and it's still kind of brewing In the morning when I get up early to do my devotions, sometimes that log still has some embers. I'm here to tell you there's still some embers floating around of Pentecost. God wants us to poke it, to refuel it, and say, come, Holy Spirit. If you've never experienced it, you say, well, I believe in Jesus, but is there more? The answer is yes. You will be warmed up. It will be joy. It will be a blessing. And God wants to use you in greater ways. But I pray that everyone would be filled with the Holy Spirit and not filled with drugs or alcohol, pornography, or all the things of this world, but refreshed in the things of Almighty God. It will sustain you and it will bless you. And it's available for you today. That's a good place for an amen. But here's the question. And maybe just think about it. I think it's kind of obvious, but one plus one equals two. Why tongues? Do you know the Bible says the tongue is the hardest thing to control? It's not that we speak in tongues or we have control of the Holy Spirit. Hopefully the Holy Spirit has control of us. Hopefully we don't catch the Holy Spirit. Hopefully the Holy Spirit catches us. But listen to what the book of James says about the tongue. And by the way, this is what's going to get you in trouble, is your mouth. Speaking in tongues will never get you in trouble. Your mouth will get you in trouble. Watch this. When we put bits into the mouths of horses and make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider What a great forest is set on fire with a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil amongst the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and itself on fire by hell. When most people think about fire, they think about hell. I'm not trying to throw this in your face, 
But if you're not sure what will happen to you when you die, the thought that a human being would spend eternity in fire is just, I'm not trying to offend you, but the thought that you would go to hell forever burning up in a place of pitch blackness, it bothers me. Even if it doesn't bother you, I, it bothers me that it bothers you. And so what we're talking about, your tongue can get you into heaven or can keep you on your way to going to hell. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. Your mouth can get you into heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Confess it. Say, Lord, I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross to take away my sins. I want to start following you. I was in darkness, whatever. Lord, I want to follow you. If you don't confess, the Bible says, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's why we always preach salvation. And that's why we ask you to confess. Are you really a follower of Jesus? Because with your mouth, that's what gets you into heaven or it will condemn you for all of eternity. But on a practical level, think about the harsh words that we say. All day long, you hear the F word. All, all day long, you hear that word. All day, all day long, you hear the words God and damn. If people knew what they were saying, that we damn things to all of eternity without God. We're just living in a moment. Pastor John's just standing in front of you for a moment. My life will be gone in a moment. Your life will be gone in a moment. But to damn something for all of eternity, that's reality. The whole, when we talk about fire, you're talking about eternal consumption in a place called hell, and this is a big deal. But all day long, you hear out of people's mouths harsh words, cursing, lying, stealing. The Bible actually says from the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said, out of the heart, that's where adultery, that's where immorality, that's where lying and stealing and all this stuff comes from, and we just say what's on our mouth. So when someone kind of says stuff that comes out of their mouth, they say, oh, I didn't mean it, that's not who I really am, I have a good heart. No, you don't. We have a perverted heart. We have a dark heart. We have a dark that needs to be transformed and, and totally changed inside of us. But God has this wonderful gift he says, you can't control your mouth. You have a dirty mouth. Now, this is old school. This would get my dad in jail today. But my dad used to wash my mouth out with soap. That's not fun. One time he couldn't find the soap, and I'm, I, was, I was ornery. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I clean up a lot better. But one time he couldn't find the soap, and he grabbed the shampoo. I'm like, Dad, I'm like looking at him, I'm like, you're crazy. I'm like, is that pert? Some of you maybe grew up old school where your parents took off the belt or they washed your mouth out with soap. Looking back at it, I had every right to get my mouth washed out. My mouth would get me in trouble. I would get in fights. I would say stuff I shouldn't have. I was a class clown, and I would just get myself in trouble. Some of you, your mouth costs you. I mean, you know what? When you start talking to people today, very rarely do people start naturally talking about God. You ever notice it? You know what people talk about right now? It's pollen. Oh, I was outside shoveling the pollen this week. Or then it goes right to politics, or really what it comes down to is these masks. Boy, Marlton Assembly of God, we take shots all day long. People say stuff like on social media, oh, well, we need our pastors who are courageous. And um, Listen, you're kidding me, right? People can just lob stuff up on social media if it doesn't matter, but words matter. Say what you want about President Trump, good or bad, but those words incited a riot. And boy, that, that was a bad day for America. Words matter. Words will get you into heaven or condemn you into hell. You say, why, why words? Because it comes from the heart. God wants to make sure your life is under control. And if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and on your mouth, you'll declare the praises of God. Most people, you know what their highest level is? Is politics. That, 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 what they just start talking about is politics. Trump, Biden, whatever. They don't even think about God. Can I just tell you in God's sovereignty, politics and what is down here and God is up here. Lead with God. Lead with the goodness of God. 
But you say, I can't get there. I'm here to tell you you can't get there on your own. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, what will happen is when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have this fire burning inside of you. Your mouth will be excited about the things of God. You'll have this direct access to God in talking. Watch this. It says, look at 1 Corinthians 14. It says this. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. This is a direct act. When an individual Christian prays in the spirit, you don't need interpretation. You're just talking to God. You say, well, I don't know what it sounds like. Sounds like gibberish or whatever. No, but God understands it. If you listen to God, don't talk. You'll hear God say, I understand what you're saying. Let me say that again. If you'll pray in tongues privately, you'll hear God say to you, I understand what you're saying. God will affirm it in your heart. Nobody else knows what's going on, whatever. All I'm telling you, if you're down, you're in the basement, you start praying in the Holy Spirit, he is the lifter of your spirit, man. Businessmen, you go into a business meeting, you don't know which way that's going to go, if it's going to be good or bad or whatever, what I, or you don't, you don't understand who you're dealing with, it's, it's shady, it's as good as somebody. If you'll pray in the Spirit outside of the door, not loud, don't, this is not to talk to anybody else. You just talk to God. And you just begin to pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I just need wisdom and grace right here. I guarantee you something will happen in that meeting that will open up a direction for you. Will you just sit back and you just keep your mouth shut and you say, you know what? I'm going to let this one go right by. Your success in life will be what you say and as you get older, what you don't say. The Holy Spirit will quicken your heart and your mouth to give you victory in every circumstance of your life. You say, well, what do I need to do? You need to trust him. Trust him with your heart, trust him with your mouth, and pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't do it around anybody else. They're gonna think you're crazy. Listen, if someone takes a, a shot of this sermon, they're gonna say stuff. It happens all the time. People get a little bit of my sermon, they'll step out, get upset, put up something on social media. This is a gift for you and for your life. Watch this. You say, well, does it just kind of take control of me? No, no, you're a part of this. Watch this. I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. This is a full life in Christ. You're saved as a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, but then there's a gift that God wants to give you. This is not all that we talk about. You still have to raise your kids, balance budgets. But this world is stuck on policies, pipelines, gas prices, weather, pollen, policy. And Jesus said, I have a gift for you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what my prayer for you is that you don't drink alcohol. You say, well, a glass of wine with fettuccine, yeah, whatever, I get it. But I wish you'd be more filled with the Holy Spirit. I know it's legal now, but I wish you wouldn't get high on drugs. I wish you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because what the Holy Spirit does is give you an access and an opening to a spirit-filled, intense presence of God that you would never have on your own. It will eliminate your mouth from saying stupid stuff and open your mouth to a divine connection with Almighty God. I didn't pick speaking in tongues. I know it sounds weird even talking about it, but the more you get familiar with something, actually starts making sense. You say, Pastor, do you want us to speak in tongues? No. I want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But what comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a confirming sign of speaking in tongues. And then I suggest to you that you pray in the Holy Spirit every day. Every day. You practice it. I always get a kick out of someone who wants to be good at sports. Like They want to play, be good at basketball, but then they don't practice. Well, of course you got to be practiced. You build decks. Every day you got to get out there and work on your craft. God can fill you and you can be stronger and better Christian and strong. It's not a sign of maturity. It's just a gift. Say, God, would you teach me how to be filled? Because what happens is God begins to speak to you through his word and his spirit and does something divine in your heart. And I want to tell you, the spirit baptism is for all believers. You say, well, how do I receive it? First, believe. Is this of the Bible? Is Pastor John crazy? I mean, is it just nuts? Now, there are some people, just so you know, they don't think this is Bible. They think that this stopped. But do you know around the world, minus America, do you know around the world what's growing like wildfire is spirit baptism around the world? 
Pentecostal Christians are growing around the world. It's the greatest growth. Brazil, South America, Africa, China. It's like a mighty move of God. I say, Lord, we need it here. We need a mighty move of God here. Not to make people weird, but make people full of the Holy Spirit and let God's presence and God's power touch our moms and dads. I hope and pray you believe for your kids. Oh, God, fill them with the Holy Spirit. I do not want my kids to be filled with everything else. Yes, they need to be modern and all that stuff. Oh, Lord, the stuff that's in this world today, I'd rather them be filled with the Holy Spirit. So believe. Ask. Just say, God, would you fill me? And you know what I, this is how I think you receive spirit baptism best, just by worshiping and praising God. If God saved you, you're going to heaven, God's faithful, he meets all of your needs, he's promised to be with you, just begin to praise him and worship him. It's not about your tongue, but there is something about worshiping, praising almighty God. It gets the ball rolling in your life. Oh, I praise you. If you're not a praiser, it's going to be hard for God to like participate with your mouth. You say, well, I'm, and this is, happens with men. And I can't, by the way, I can't tell you if you're worshiping under your mask or not. But if you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, why won't you tell him? I mean, a marriage doesn't work. And you, you say, well my, well, my wife, she knows I love her. Yeah, but once in a while you have to tell her. Like every five or ten years. You know, every anniversary you got to tell her. Got to write it down. Get some flowers from Produce Junction for 10 bucks. Hey, I love you. But a real relationship is a love relationship. Say, Lord, I love you. So grateful for you. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It flows out of you. It's who you are. It's who we are. We love God. We love God more than anything else. He touches our lives. Our kids see it. Our church feel it. You feel it. You sense it. Do you love God? So believe it's in the scripture, not because the pastor tells you. Ask, and then I would just say receive. Some people make this the biggest deal. Like, this is the biggest doctrine to fight. God says, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you as you drive away at home, take a walk in the park today. Just begin to worship and thank God, and you'll, you'll sense it. You don't have to work yourself up. You don't have to pray for yourself. Just begin to trust God. He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. It'll be the greatest divine joy you'll ever have. Let me say that again. Speaking and praying in the Spirit will be the greatest divine joy you'll ever have. Some of you, you're so bound by anxiety, fear. You don't have joy. You know, one of the things that really helps is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what the world's going to do is, hey, hey, come and smoke. Come and be immoral. Come and drink. Come and cheat on your wife. It just pull at you to give you a high, and then it'll drop you. Satan loves to do this. He likes to paint the canvas, and he likes just to have, like, Tim Tebow. Just start this, like, you know, if you just do that, then everything will be okay. But then he doesn't show the dark side of the consequences of our sin. You know what the fire of God does? It brings fulfillment and joy, and then it spurs you on to greater growth and move of God in your life. I want a greater move of God in my life. Amen? Or take me now, Lord, but if this is all we've got, no, we need to move forward, and we need a new Pentecost. We need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Are you hungry for the Holy Spirit? All I know is the Holy Spirit is waiting to touch your heart in your life. And I don't know know where all this stuff goes. I don't know. Mount Mask, I don't know. I I joke about it because it's almost too heartbreaking to talk about everything happening in the world. All I know is what's happening in Valesburg is a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And what I believe God wants to do is send a mighty move of the Holy Spirit at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock at Marlton Assembly of God. But you have to ask. I'm already full of the Holy Spirit. God is changing my life every single day. There's nothing more important than getting people, because what happens, the Holy Spirit talks about Jesus and makes Jesus alive And we need Jesus in our life. Would you stand with me in the Lord's presence? I don't know what you do with a message like this. Usually we'd have an intense worship. And we can with the mask, I don't know. Or we would have an intense altar call. But I don't know if people want to come. But what I'm telling you now, what Miriam preached about, in your home you can have a touch of God. 
in the church, at your work, wherever you are, I believe God is saying, I'm going to go past the mask, I'm going to go past politics, and I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Whoever is open to a mighty move of God. Listen, first, if your life's not right with God, you need the Holy Spirit. You could probably feel him convicting you. You need salvation. That's always the first move of the Holy Spirit, salvation. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to come into my life. I need to become a Christian. But after that, we all need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. So make it your prayer. Say, come Holy Spirit upon my life. All I'm saying to you as the pastor of this church, we don't move forward unless the Holy Spirit moves us forward. We can't do it. There's almost like there's this fire by night and this cloud by day, and the Lord's just telling us to wait. But Lord, I'll lead you. I'm your guidance. I will protect you. I will provide for you. I'm faithful. South Jersey needs a move of God. North Jersey needs a move of God. Can this church provide a revival for this whole nation? The answer is yes, in Jesus' name. Can one person in this room make a difference? Yes. One person in this room be filled with the Spirit so much it touches your family, the people around you, and say, God, I need you. Or maybe you're just representing your kids. You say, God, the world that my kids are growing up in is completely different. And all they have to do is get off track a little bit, and they could easily just fall into pits that would hurt them the rest of their lives. We say, Lord, touch my family, touch my boys, touch my kids. Oh, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, the whole tongue sing. Let let God work that all out. You just say, Lord, I need you. I need more of Jesus. I need more of the Holy Spirit. Come. As we look forward to Pentecost Sunday, we wait on the Lord. Say, oh, God, pour out your Holy Spirit. And he will pour out his Holy Spirit. He's faithful. We just lift up your hands like this. Lord, we need you. God, we need you. You've told us to have this emphasis of the Holy Spirit Now is the time, Lord, for a move of God. Lord, in North Jersey and South Jersey, we need a touch from you. Lord, we need Jesus alive in our lives. We need the conviction of God. Don't let us get by with anything. Help us to be like Christ. Help us to be full of the fruits of the Spirit. But Lord, you do give us spirit baptism. It's needed, just like on the video, you speak to us, you warn us about the future, what is to come, and Lord, we need you for the future. We can't see what's happening one day ahead of us, but Lord, our nation, our families are in trouble, and we need to be filled with God and God's presence and Jesus Christ. We cannot rely upon ourselves, but we say, come Holy Spirit, move upon our hearts, Lord, Fill the altars, fill the prayer meeting, fill the touch of God upon our, change us forever in Jesus' name. Oh God, we need you. We need you. We need you. If you want God to do a great work in your life, I just want to tell you he's available to do it. You don't have to earn it or work yourself up. Just receive all that God has. First, salvation, and then spirit baptism or a spirit refreshing or a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Every day, you can have a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Say, I just need the Lord. I need the Lord. You've come to the right spot. Not to embarrass anybody, but if you want to come to an altar for salvation or fresh touch of the Holy Spirit or first time, we're going to sing and just worship the Lord. That's usually how it goes. A a thankful heart, a, a full heart full of grace of God, just praising Him and worshiping for all that He's done. And then receive the Holy Spirit. Receive a touch from him. It won't hurt you. It will speak to your heart and speak to your life in a practical way. Great is his faithfulness. So we're going to begin to sing. If you want to come to the altar, you want to lift your hands and worship at the seat, whatever it is, then we'll close this down with a word of prayer. But God is faithful. He is faithful. You want to join me around this altar and believe God for a touch of the Holy Spirit. He's here. He's here.
I'm going to ask Will and the team just to play that song through again without singing. And listen, I'm just walking in faith here because I can't see your face, your mask. It's, it's hard. It's hard to be a public presenter. I can't tell if you're, if I'm telling a joke, I can't tell if you're laughing or not. I can't tell if you're mad at me or not. I can't tell if you're worshiping the Lord or not. I can't, I can't. It's very awkward. But I do know that God inhabits the praises of his people. And there is something about being thankful and worshipful. And so maybe we could just do that again. But in your own way, again, you're hidden behind your mask. But would you just worship the Lord? I mean, God loves it when we worship him. Do you know that's part of why he made us? So we would be divinely connected with him. Sin ruined the whole thing. But his word tells us that he wants us to be worshipers and to glorify him. And the reason why we lift up our hands, our, our antennas, is because it brings us a kind of physically closer to God. We acknowledge his greatness, his goodness of God. And Listen, I'm not trying to stir something up. You're, you're not gonna have a, this great emotional moment right now, you're not. But sometimes God uses pastors and leaders to prepare your heart for what God wants to do. Part of what God wants us to do, I believe, I believe this with all my heart, he wants us to be better worshipers. Because there's something, when you get your eyes off of yourself and onto him, you're open to spiritual things, you're open to the word of God, and you're open to spirit baptism. This church needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Our success will only be if God leads us and guides us. It will be obvious to all. But I just want to encourage you to worship him. Maybe that's not something you normally do, but nobody can even see you. But as, we, as the music plays, would you just lift up your hands and glorify him and worship him? Open up your mouth, tell him how much you love him, how much you're grateful for him. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Oh Lord, we praise you. We exalt you, oh God. We worship you, Lord. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Where will we be without you? All of creation sings, worthy is your name, holy is your name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Son. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We magnify you. We bless you. We exalt you. Holy is your name. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Oh, God, I praise you. I exalt you. Oh, Lord, worthy is your name. Thank you for spirit baptism. Thank you for refreshing our soul. Thank you for the gift of God. Oh Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us over to overflowing, oh God. Glorify your name. Oh God, glorify your name. Let your name be true. Let every man be a liar. Let your name be exalted. Fill us all with the Holy Ghost. Oh God, fill us all with the Holy Ghost. Oh Lord, I pray, Lord, signs and wonders. Only you can do it, only you can move us. Oh God, we walk by faith and not by sight. We bless your name. Oh, we praise you, Holy Lord. Spirit we exalt you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill. close your eyes for a moment. The real reason why we talk about spirit baptism is so people would come to know Jesus. That Christian people be empowered to share their faith. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll have the ability to do what you can't do in your own flesh. And you'll be my witness. You'll be a light. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Church life, faith, Christian Christianity is on the decline in America. The answer for the world is Jesus. He's the one that brings light and hope, future, peace with God, joy. He promises eternal life. It's the answer. Jesus 
is the answer. And so we conclude this service, this message, with a call to salvation. All of this work of the Holy Spirit is to bring people closer to Jesus. And Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. He did for you what you can't do for yourself. He went to the cross. He died. He rose again to give you victory. If you'll put your faith in him, you can have salvation. If you'll die to yourself, your way, your will, your future, you just give it to Jesus. Say, Lord, you have a better plan for my life. I will follow you. Hear his voice today. Come, follow me, and I'll make you a different person. Let him transform you on the inside. Let him break every chain in your life. Give your life to Jesus. Turn from your sin. He'll forgive you. He'll give you grace. Today is the day of salvation. He won't reject you. No matter what you've done or how bad you think you are, he loves you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ loves us. He died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Today is salvation. Whether you're online or you're in the room, I just want to pray for you before we go. You say, Pastor, my life's not right with God. I'm not saved. And I want Jesus to save me. I want him to take away my sins. And I want grace to come into my life and transform my life from the inside out. I need Jesus. I want to tell you there's nothing you could do on your own for God to transform you. You allow him to do his work inside of you from the inside out for his glory and for his honor as a follower of Jesus Christ. No one's looking around, but you slip up your hand and say, Pastor, today is my day. I want to get saved. I want to ask Jesus to come into my life. Is there anyone in the house today you want to give your life to Christ? Turn to God and say, Lord, I want to start serving you, following you. Today is my day. Is there anyone in the house you want to give your life to Christ? God's saving people. He's touching people. Lord Jesus, today we say yes to you. And Lord, I ask for nothing less than a mighty revival of God. A turn to repentance, a turn to prayer, a turn to holiness, a turn to spirit baptism, and turn to the thoughts of eternal life, to stand before you and to give an account. So I say, come Holy Spirit. Let me just give you a couple next steps here at Marlton Assembly for this week. This Wednesday, I hope you'll join with us a day of prayer and fasting. You say, why do that? You know, I'll just give a little lesson to the guys. A girl likes to be appreciated and loved. If you just kind of go right in with the kiss, you kind of miss it that they want to be a... Sometimes the Lord wants to know our heart and he wants us to pursue him. When you pray and fast, you're denying your flesh and you're giving God more time. Americans, boy, we just want to go through the, the drive through and just get everything done in one hour service. There's something about just waiting on the Lord. The best time you'll ever have in prayer is with an empty stomach. I don't like fasting, by the way. I, I hate it. I hate it. My flesh, but it's the best thing for me. And we'll come back together on Wednesday night and we'll take communion and we'll have some snacks after. Your flesh won't like it. You will be hungry, you'll have headaches. The good thing about a mask, no one will know you have bad breath. Just you and yourself, right? You've been having bad breath for like 14 months, just so you know that. We'll have our United Prayer Service in person or online. And then just know this, our summer service, you'll, you'll get it, but 9 and 1045 moving forward. Does that sound good? But we need to pray and fast because next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. With anticipation, expectation, the Bible says, wait, and you'll receive power. Pastor Mel is going to preach next week, and he's going to sweat. I don't even know what he's going to say. It's, just, it's exciting. I don't know. We all need to change our oil in our car. All right, I'll come to an altar. It's just exciting. It's going to be a great time in God's presence. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Valesburg tonight at 5 o'clock, we're coming for you online and in the house. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. We're out of church. Thanks for being with us on Church Online today. We had so much fun with you. And as we get ready for this upcoming season, a few things to know. First, remember, next Sunday, 
is Pentecost Sunday. That's the 23rd. Get ready to come to church expecting God to work. Don't forget we have special services on Memorial Day coming up. You could register for all that's going on though tomorrow in our registration station. Thanks so much for being here.